recording. So welcome to the second session of our Mastering Academic uh, Writing Group. And today we are going to talk about paragraphs. Let's begin with this quote. Today's quote points out a habit that has been proved to be very productive when writing your thesis or dissertation. A little of writing each day, even just a reflection about what you have to do, is always a step towards the achievement of your goal and a step away from procrastination. So baby steps are effective and you have to do that. This is the agenda for today. And as you can see, the focus of our work is paragraph. Uh, there are some things that you uh, may have listened to before if you have attended other of my web webinars about academic writing. However, today the idea is to restate some um, concepts and put it into the framework of what a paragraph should be. Uh, welcome, Stephanie. Okay, so let's begin by talking about how you applied what we discussed about the characteristic of academic writing last week. So in each section from now on, we are begin we are going to begin discussing how do you apply um the what we discussed and how what do you produce so I, i'll take some examples of that and this was the exercise it was focused on writing two paragraphs that have the characteristics of academic writing and a reflection about why you think they are a piece of academic writing and this is a very good example of the reflection I asked for. It presents the characteristic this person believes their paragraph have, and it also includes an evaluation of the product. And this is very, very good. So well done. This is a kind of reflection that enhances your metacognition skills. Welcome, Natasha. Right? The paragraph I present as an example of your work is on the right track, but can be improved, especially with the tools that we will discuss today. So after today's session, it will be easier to improve this um, paragraph. From the point of view of its wording, we can do some changes to make it clear. And I want you to pay attention to what changes we can do to make this paragraph clearer. And here you have a clearer version of the same paragraph. And what we do, or what did I do? I put together subject and predicate. So I wrote memory is a core component of our daily function on a social intellectual level. It enables us to know ourselves, our values, go and so on. And then the following quote, yeah, and this, uh, then I present the quotation, but as a block quotation. Why? Because that quotation has more than 40 words. So you cannot write it into the paragraph, into the previous paragraph as such, or, or between quotation marks. You need to write such long quotation as a block which is invented, okay? So that's one characteristic of academic writing and by the way, this is the kind of work that a good dissertation editor do for you. So sometimes 
you will need to uh, hire a, an editor that uh, could be could do this kind of work for you. That if you uh, didn't realize that you have uh, that you have written a quotation that has more than forty uh, words, and you re you wrote it in uh, between quotation mark, this editor can change that. Okay. And it's time to present paragraph, the focus of today's meeting. Uh, welcome, Stefan, Erica. So you got home safely. Gina, Joy, welcome back. Great. Uh, so it's time to present paragraph, which, which is the focus of today's meeting. As you can see in the slide, there are different levels of writing in an academic text, especially in a dissertation. They follow a sequence that begins with sentences, ends with paragraph or section, and has, sorry, chapter and, or section, and has paragraphs as the bridge between those ends. Such role of paragraph makes them the basic unit of academic writing. And you may ask, why? Because they are the transformation of isolated sentences into coherent wholes, which can be connected to become sections and chapters that let us present and defend arguments. Imagine an academic test that is made of isolated sentences without any connection. As the slide says, paragraphs are like the buildings of a well-planned city in which each building and construction has a connection to its surroundings to form a functional unit. And I think that's a very good example of how paragraphs work together to create a cohesive and coherent text. Therefore, a paragraph is the union of sentences, and that implies that you have to work with sentences and also the words and phrases that let you connect those sentences. Unless have a quick look at the types of sentences that you may use to express your ideas. And you may say, oh, listen, I attended some of your webinars about academic writing and I already know that. But the more you know them, the better your writing. Here you have a summary of the basic structure of sentences. Once we present each one of them, you will be able to fully interpret this summary. And as we can infer from the title, this is the simplest structure a sentence may have. This kind of sentences are independent classes because their meaning does not depend on any other idea. Look at the example. It is possible to interpret this sentence without re reading any other sentence. So this type of sentence is so simple that many students who do not master academic writing are tempted to use only this type of sentence to write their academic test. Well, it is certainly easier, but the text would be monotonous and difficult to read, believe it or not. So sometimes the easiest action is not the best action. And here you have the second type of sentence which puts together two independent clauses or ideas and joins them using a coordinating conjunction like the ones known as the fanboys or correlative conjunction. As you can see in the example, 
it is possible to understand each independent clause or idea separately. You don't have problem understanding each one of those sentences. Uh, however, this sentence structure relates them in such a way that they are still understandable as separate units, but their meanings are associated to express the existence of relationship. In this case, is a relationship of opposition. They are different from one another. Okay. And here we have the center structure known as complex because there is at least one part of the sentence whose meaning depends on the independent idea. Look at the example and see that the fact that the students were in pre-established group is a consequence of the second part of the sentence. This sentence could also be written as, since the subject had been assigned to two advanced calculus courses, they were in pre-established groups. And when you do that change, uh, you don't change the relationship between the two parts of the sentence and you don't change its meaning because the relationship is still one of cause effect. And you can use transitions, word, phrases, you can use relative pronouns or subordinated conjunction to make complex sentences. And this is the last type of sentence structure and is the compound complex structure which is the highest level of sentence complexity as you can realize in the example presented in that example you combine or, or in this sorry in this structure you combine two independent ideas with one or more ideas whose meaning is tied to the other parts of the sentence let's see the example you have two independent ideas in that, in that sentence. The study addressed valid threat, and the study took into account the possible effect of mediating variables. The dependent ideas are the subjects were not selected at random, and mediating variables were controlled statistically. And the words although, and, and which were used to combine all the ideas into just one sentence in which the relationships among these parts are clearly presented. And this is the kind of sentence that you need to practice to write so your, um, your paragraph and, and consequently your text uh, can be fully understood, but also has uh, a flow of idea which runs smoothly. So, to connect ideas into a paragraph, you need not only sentences, but also transition words and phrases. Okay? Transition words or phrases, which are also known as linking or transitional, can be divided into the categories presented in this slide. And you can find many lists of them in the internet. If you do that, it will help you connect sentences better and use a wider vocabulary to avoid monotony in the reuse. So you don't have to use always but however or, or you don't have to have uh, to use only because okay these categories correspond to the methods of logical organization you can use to join ideas reflecting the relationship you want to express for example if two ideas are on the same line of thought you can link them using and of course to also in addition in the same way 
and many other ones. If they express opposition, then you have to use although, instead, on the other hand, in spite of, on the contrary, and not only but and however, and so on. Therefore, you first establish the kind of relationship that exists between the ideas you want to express, and then look for words and phrases to make such relationship evident. That's the sequence that you have to follow. First, you look at the idea or you think about the ideas that you want to express and you establish how, what kind of relationship you want to express when you put those ideas together. In this sense, lists of transition words are very useful for writers. But remember that you have to establish the method of logical organization to link the ideas first. And now it's time to talk about the structure that a paragraph may have in an academic test. Mm -hmm. There are, of course, more than one way of building a paragraph, absolutely. However, the mill paragraph has a simple and effective structure that is easy to remember and is widely used in academic writing. As you can see in the slide, each letter of the acronym refers to a part of the paragraph. And now we are going to expand on each one of them. Let's begin with the main idea, which is the fo focus of the paragraph. So the topic sentence that expresses the main idea explain what the paragraph is about. And all sentences in the paragraph should have a direct connection to it because each paragraph must have only one focus, only one main idea. So a main idea on its own does not con constitute a paragraph. It must be supported with relevant detail, examples, and analysis. And the more common mistake we can find in academic writing in relation to the main idea is that a paragraph discusses more than one main idea. Each paragraph Oh my God, sorry, that is a track of an un underdeveloped country. It means that it is noisy. Sorry about that. Each paragraph must have only one focus or topic. And you have to begin a new paragraph whenever you have a new main idea or a new focus. So pay attention to that common mistake. The second element to include in a paragraph is the evidence that supports what the main idea says. Uh, remember that all your claims must be supported so the arguments can be considered valid and convincing. You try to convince people. In the slide, you can see the type of evidence that may be used in academic writing. The most common mistake in relation to evidence is to provide evidence that does not support the claim because it refers to another topic. So it's not only a matter of providing citations, data, etc. The evidence must be related to the main idea and prove it. So when you choose evidence to support your main idea, you have to be sure that that evidence is really supported that idea and not another one. And then we go to analysis. Uh, leaving the evidence to speak by itself is a very risky action since you cannot be completely sure of how readers may interpret it. 
Therefore, you have to explain how evidence proves the main idea, and that cannot be done just by restating or summarizing the evidence. You have to point out the relationship between the main idea and the evidence and explain it. That's the, the way of avoiding a common mistake when writing paragraph that you write, you write down the evidence and you do not analyze it because you think that, it, that the relationship between the main idea and the evidence is so clear that everybody is going to interpret the same. No, it's not usually, it, it doesn't function in, in that way usually. And the last element of a meal paragraph is the link. It can, have been, it can be approached as a conclusion about the main idea or as a connection between the paragraph and the argument of the section or the chapter or the thesis. In other words, you can make a conclusion about the main idea of the paragraph or you can connect that paragraph to the main idea of the section. If you are talking about, for instance, a data analysis, then you can say, what is the relationship between the paragraph that you have already written to data analysis, which is the main idea of your uh, section? But it may also include a connection to the next paragraph. And that is an action that connect paragraph in such a way that is easy to go from one paragraph to the other one because you make the relationship between both paragraphs, you make it clear and you make it explicit and then you can go. So if you finish with a conclusion about, for instance, a conclusion about uh, the main idea in a paragraph, then you see that the next paragraph is uh, is the effect of what you said in the previous paragraph. So you begin the next paragraph with consequently or therefore, and you connect both paragraphs using a transitional word. Okay, and this element helps create a text that is coherent since its ideas are connected and flow smoothly. And here you have an example of a meal paragraph in which its different elements are pointed out to help you visualize how it is built. You have the main idea, then you have an in-text citation as evidence, then you have the analysis uh, about what is the relationship between the main idea and the evidence provided. And finally, uh, there is a link to the paper main argument. You link this paragraph to the main argument of that academic text. You can also use this rubric to evaluate if paragraphs follow the, the mill concept, okay? So you have a rubric which says, um, what, how was presented the main idea, the evidence, the analysis and the link, and you can evaluate it and decide if it, that the way that it was done exceeds the standard or meets the standard or approaches the standard, on does not meet the standard. So it's a way, it's, um, this is a tool that you can use not only to write that, so that you can be, will be able to write better paragraph, but also to help your peers um, to uh, write better paragraph when you use this rubric to establish how good they are, okay? Um, I should restate that there are for an academic text. 
but the meal one is very useful for students who are not expert writers. And that's why I have decided to present it in this webinars, okay? And here there is another point that we have to talk about, which is the length of paragraph. The length, the length of a paragraph is an issue that many students wonder about. This slide intends to clarify it. Make sure to check your paragraph size when revising. If your paragraph is longer than one printed page, it is generally too long. And you should try to divide it into two or more shorter paragraphs. And it is usually because it is so long, usually because you include more than one main idea. So when you find how many ideas you have included in the paragraph, you will be able to divide it because you will know where to cut. Okay. All right. So this is the main idea of, of today's session. Paragraphs are important and you need to improve how you write them. And well, we can discuss that because now it's time for questions and answers. So Please feel free to participate. There are many people today, so it's very, that will be a very good discussion. And remember that as a group, peer-to-peer -peer is an effective method to improve. So please, you are free to participate. Welcome, Stephen. I haven't said that. Welcome to you. Are you too shy today? I don't believe so. Oh, Claudia, welcome. I haven't seen you in a long time. Is everything clear? I can't believe that I have been such a good teacher. Huh? Don't you have any idea to share any question to ask? Do you prefer to ask the question or participate um, orally? Hey, what happened? Can you hear me? Ah, okay. So it's not a matter of technological ghost. It's a matter of shy, or being shy, or something like that. Come on. What's your opinion 
about the meal concept. I mean, you as writers of academic text, what's your opinion? No, Mark, I know that you are never shy, but since you haven't said anything, I suppose that you were. Yes, I can see your chat messages. Why? Have you sent some, one, um, Adrian? Hmm. Yes, there are other t uh, are other ways of doing it. However, however, all ways of organizing a paragraph must have the um, idea of main idea. Oh, must have the concept of having a main idea and having evidence to support that main idea, what changes, in fact, is the way that you um, presented it or, or the order. You, uh, the main con the meal concept says that you, first of all, you write down the main idea. However, you may choose to write down the main idea at the end. That's another way of organizing a paragraph. But what makes the meal concept very useful for, for a dissertation, in fact, is that that order of um, having first the main idea, then the evidence, then the analysis, and then the leak, makes the connection between paragraph easy. OK? Uh, Joy says, uh, Mark, you sent two, two texts, and I, 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 I can see them. I don't know if any other of people of here at the group can see what Mark wrote. Just let me know. Uh, Joy says, I was wondering how evidence and analysis could be distinguished clearly in my writing. Well, remember that. Uh, evidence, uh, let's, let's look at that, um, at that slide because evidence has very clear elements to provide that. Let me go there so you can see what I'm going to tell you. Look, evidence has to be the form of information for journals of books in terms of in terms of um, citations, or it could be data from your own research, or it, it could be paraphrase from literature, or a chain of logical reasoning, or an image, or, or a related anecdote or experience. So this is the, the form that evidence takes. And analysis is a critical a reflection about how or why the reasons for which you think that your evidence support your main idea. So, uh, Joy, they should be different. Uh, they should be dis they should be distinguished clearly. One is this one is this kind of information, descriptive information, and the other one is a critical reflection. Stephen, if you have a thesis chapter of say 40 or 50 paragraphs, then using a linked sentence at the end of each paragraph may seem like a little too much reinforcing of the point. Well, but you have different um you have different options because you can link the paragraph to the chapter, but you can link uh, the paragraph to the main idea of that paragraph, or you can link that paragraph to the next paragraph, or you can link that paragraph to the section of the chapter. So you don't have to do it in the same way every in each paragraph. OK, um, you need uh, you need to or you have different options. What is important is 
that a paragraph should not be uh, presented as as an uh, as a, oh my god isolated phenomenon. So you have to make clear why you include that paragraph. Okay. Uh, Mark, my sentence structure needs clean up. Okay. Lots of wrong number related to one idea. Yes. Oh, the point is that each paragraph must have only one main idea. And all the other sentences of a paragraph, independently of the uh, way that you present Okay, now can you hear me? I don't know what happened. Um, there is something here very strange. I don't know why. Okay, so let me go back. Um, let me go back to... Uh, okay. Um, Okay, lost sound. Okay. Um, Stephanie says, when writing the main idea, does it need to state a claim of some kind? I worry that I might bring an arrogant tone. Uh, the thing is, what do you understand by by a claim, okay? A claim is something that you uh, state and that you want to discuss. That's a claim. You are not saying that, that uh, what you are saying, for instance, is, um, let me see um, an example of that. You can begin a paragraph saying, um, many students, uh, graduate students, have problems with academic writing. That's that's a claim. Why it is a claim? Because it is a, a proposition that you that you are doing. It's a, an idea that you want to discuss, and you have to make it. Uh, if you say that, me as a reader expect that you support that idea. And so that's not being arrogant. That's being scientific, okay? So, okay. Okay, Claudia, you asked any other suggestion you may give us about what? And let me know. Uh, Adrian says that there are many, there are other ways to organize paragraph. Yeah, I already answered that. Then uh, I don't know why, but sound uh, was lost. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Adrian answered something to Joy. And that is usually, evidence usually involves summarizing and paraphrasing of others' work and viewpoints. Whereas analysis is our interpretation and inferences made on the basis of other work and viewpoints. Oh, you said it beautifully, Adrian. You said it beautifully. 
That's the difference between evidence and analysis. Evidence is uh, it refers to facts, and an, an analysis refers to interpretation. Uh, Stephanie said, was wondered about tone when stating the main idea so it doesn't come off as arrogant or biased, especially when there is conflict evidence. It always takes me a long time. Well, um, let me let me clarify that to you. Um, you, I already said that you are not being arrogant. You, when you write, for instance, a dissertation or any academic text, your main goal is to convince people of what you are saying. So you are not being arrogant. You are being a scientific, as I said before. And regarding biases, um, bias, you are biased when you uh, follow just one idea without opening your mind to other points. And when you have conflicting opinions, when you have conflicting points of view, then what you have to discuss both things and then get a conclusion from your point of view or which one is more accurate. So in that way, you can avoid biases. Okay, so if you want to avoid any bias, you have to present uh, evidence in a neutral way. And that means that you take into account not only evidence that support what you think, but also evidence that support uh, opposite points of view, but you, in the analysis section, you discuss the relationship between both types of evidence and you get to a conclusion about which one is more accurate and why. Uh, Claudia says, if you allow me, an important issue is to think about our future readers. Is the information I am giving uh, I'm giving clear? Does it provide him with enough information, evidence, and analysis? And you are completely right, Claudia. Why? Because as I said before, the main goal of any academic text is to convince. So if you want to convince your reader, you have to think about how uh, the information is going to be interpreted by readers and that's why you cannot leave evidence without analysis because if you do that you open the door to have different types of interpretation and with that you cannot be sure of how your that that your text will be interpreted in the way that you expected it to be Okay, so this is the part of the sound. I have started to use a mind map to plan my chapter paragraph by paragraph. That way I can ensure that I only have one idea per paragraph. Great, Annalie. That's a way of doing, that's a different tool to do. It's not just to use an outline and you are doing it with a mind map. Okay, sentence length also matters. I have come to realize that sentences that run beyond three lines on the double space page most likely will be convoluted. Absolutely. Uh, um, what is important is that your sentences can be readable. And uh, as, as a, a paragraph should not go beyond a, um, a page, it also means that a sentence uh, should, to be clear enough, you have to use a, a sentence structure that can be fully decoded without looking back at the subject. 
So you can use simple sentences, you can use compound sentences, complex sentences, or compound complex sentences. What you don't have, what you have to take into account is that you do not put too much information in only one sentence. Okay? And that's because uh, that could make your sentences difficult to understand. Uh, Mark says that the reader doesn't agree with my writing. Well, my dear, uh, if that happens, it could mean that you are not going to achieve your goal, which is to convince your readers, okay? And remember that in academic writing, you are not entertaining your readers. You are convincing your readers. So you have to be uh, very, very focused on, make, on making your readers agree with your writing. Um, okay, that's Joy trying to uh, agree in with Annalise about the use and mind map. Okay, that's good. Ah, that's the reason why we have problems with Sylvia is having problems with the can. Yeah. Oh. Annaline, an instructor privilege suggested using post-its to rearrange them as one considered the sequence of idea. Yeah, uh, it's good to, you have to use any tool that uh, makes you comfortable enough to uh, establish the order to present your ideas, the order to present your paragraph. Confuse, oh, Mark, the problem is that you confuse your readers about logic and technology. Hmm. Why? Do you think, or do you still have any other idea to, to work with? We can make a, a quick summary according to what you have already discussed. For instance, um, you know that there are many ways of doing a paragraph. However, the meal concept could be very useful. It doesn't matter, I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to do it always in the same way, but what you have to be sure is that you present a clear main idea and enough evidence and analysis to support your idea. Okay, thank you for sharing that link, Adrian. Ah, uh, Mark, you refer to artificial intelligence for predicting analysis is not absolute. My dear, anything in life, or, or, or let me put it in this way, nothing in life is absolute, okay? Remember Einstein. So everything is relative because everything is, it is possible to change anything if we change our context, if we change time, and if we change the, the, the setting in which something happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that have um, that we can derive from this explain uh, from this discussion is that you can use uh, different tools. Uh, like my mind map besides outlines, okay? So you don't have to always use an outline. You can find ma any many other tools that you can use, okay? Um, another thing that we discuss is, are we being arrogant when we say, make claims? No, because when you make, claims in an 
in an academic text or in a dissertation, what you are doing is that you are trying to prove one point. And to prove it, you have to make claims and support those claims. And, and remember to include uh, evidence that is against your claim so you can analyze them and then say, go to a conclusion. Okay, any other point that I didn't remember? I can't remember that. Um, the tone. Stephen talk about something that I, right now I cannot see. Let me see if I can find what Stephen said. Okay, I cannot find it. Well, um, Okay, so now this is the exercise. Okay, okay, let me let me explain that to you, Joy. Ah, uh, let me let me think about an example. Uh, you may say, for instance, uh, the problem with uh, finishing a dissertation is that students like to procrastinate. That's your claim, okay? To support that claim, you have to use data or quotations that say that the main cause of having problem with a dissertation is procrastination. However, you know that there are other possibilities to explain that. So when you write down that the evidence to uh, support procrastination, you should also say, and uh, you should also say, but however, other, other people think that that's not the main cost, that support, university support, that um, insufficient background and so on are also possible reasons for not finishing the dissertation on time. And then you have written two different types of evidence, one for your claim and another type, another group of evidence against your claim. What is the next step? You have to analyze both types of evidence and get to a conclusion about which one of those two types of evidence is more accurate. Okay, so you have to analyze it and say, okay, um, because of this and this and this, is procrastination the main reason, the main cause for not finishing time and not the other one? But you have to make an analysis and present different points of view. Is it more clear now or is clearer, which is the correct grammatical way of saying it? Is, is clear? Okay. So this is the exercise for next uh, for next week. I mean, if you want my my pleasure, Joy. If you want my um, feedback about this, remember that you have to email it to me bef um, not later than Sunday. What I want you to do is to write down a meal paragraph about a concept that you consider important for your dissertation. And then you write another paragraph in which you reflect uh, about you and the writing of paragraph, in which you make an evaluation of how you have written paragraphs out, uh, until now, and how you think that what we have uh, discussed today may help you change that situation or 
not necessarily change it, but it could be um, support the way that you are doing it, okay? Is that clear what the exercise is? I would like, uh, let me tell you, I, I, I would really like that you use some colors to to make the difference, uh, to to make explicit the different parts of the, the meal paragraph. Just a way to, it, that exercise or doing that will help you recognize exactly what you are doing. And that could be very uh, good for you, okay? Well, these are the references that we have included in today. And these are uh, the next webinars at Doctoral Net and what is happening at Doctoral Net so far. Okay, I'm going to finish uh, rec recording, but we can continue.